This here has a little bit of spoilers, but nothing too much. It shouldn't ruin the experience for you. But I've only just started Last of Us 2, and I've just gone through a few bits of the game. But their tutorial, I thought was really nice. Because we talked about tone in the previous example with Titanfall 2. We talked about how, essentially, it's about you being a soldier, so it's obvious that an obstacle course, we've seen all of that in some training montage in films or on TV. If you are in England or can you get a VPN to connect to England, NordVPN, then what I'd recommend is checking, there's a show, I can't remember the full name, but it's something SAS on Channel 4 in the UK, which is about taking former SAS soldiers and having your average Joe kind of come in and compete to see if they could actually last not necessarily the actual SAS training but a course similar to it and just showing the mental toughness and the physical strength that these these people must have is mind-blowing truly you know respect to, to those obviously who fight for all of our, our countries and that and risk their lives but to see that and get a better understanding so yeah we've all seen it in some form or fashion but in Last of Us 2, it's, it's a slightly different switch up, which I was really impressed with for a couple of reasons. And, you know, if you know, if you know me, you know I'm always a huge fan of Naughty Dog's work. And, yeah, uh, we've got actually, we've got some cool stuff coming out, actually, with that stuff. But, yes, focus, Max, focus. With Last of Us 2, it's essentially a, a moment where you're getting a refresher course on how combat works, cover taking, how to vault over objects, climb objects, how to aim and how to throw. But it's done it through a more kind of innocent way in terms of a snowball fight with children between Ellie and, why am I forgetting her name? This is really bad. Is it Dina? Diana? Someone please correct me because I've I've done it wrong, but it is who Ellie is very interested in from a romantic standpoint. And I thought this was really well done for a couple of reasons, right? So in Last of Us, I haven't completed Last of Us 2, so please don't spoil this for me. Please. But you know these are very dark games. These are games which, you know, tug at your heartstrings and show you a world which is really kind of bleak. It shows the worst of humanity as well as worst of what nature can do to us. Obviously, the the virus is based on a, a real situation. So a real actual fungus, which does that to insects in, in many different places, including the rainforest. So Last of Us 2, the chance that they are showing you, firstly, how the world has grown since you have last been here. Because in Last of Us, you were in this very dictate The first town you start in, well, the first area, should we say, that you start in is obviously that the world's falling apart in Last of Us 1. You're then in a very oppressive dictatorship city, it feels very much like. And then here, you're seeing people be happy, kids running around smiling. You're having a snowball fight. It slows down the pace. It becomes, you know, a reminder that people are happy now, that they've found normality. Because if you've played Last of Us 1, you remember when Ellie finds the journal of a a teenage girl and she's complaining about boys, braces, and these kind of things. And she has the the quip of saying, is this all they had to worry about? So we get to see a bit more of an understanding of normalcy. We get to see that the world has progressed in a nicer manner in a way. And I think that was really cool because it's showing you the contrast of, you know, what I'm told is ends up being a very dark game near the end. So to see all of that take place and to slow it down, tell that story through the tutorial is very cool. I think also another thing is a lot of the time, especially with tutorials, even if it's on a sequel, is this a really tough balance. I remember I was chatting to someone about this is because obviously you want to show like, oh, move right stick to look up and down, press L2 or L1 to aim. And because it's a game where we have done this a lot of times, but you need to think of those who haven't played a game before. That's why I think it can be a little bit off-putting in a sense when you come in to play a tutorial because if you've played games long enough, you get the gist, roughly. Some some controls might be slightly different, but you understand. But they need to keep that in there for the fact that there might be new players that haven't played games. And there's been studies where people actually adapt quicker to a PC if they've worked on a PC versus that. 
of a controller. But if you give someone to your controller, like I gave one to my stepmom for her to play Last of Us, the original, and it really took her a while to get used to that. And that just shows you, for those of us who've played games with controllers, we're kind of so in sync with this. We understand it right off the bat, but others might not. So it's that balancing. So giving it in a situation which feels fun, because it's a snowball fight, we've all had snowball fights, so it's relatable. You're against kids, so, you know, if you've got a, a thing where you want to pummel kids with snow, I'm not judging. You've got to get that power fantasy there. Uh, you're understanding that this is a safe environment too. We talked a little bit, and I'll, I'll go into detail now, about you know, having sections of your tutorial where it's not actually taking place in the real world. I think that can be very jarring sometimes. Now, you can still ingrain it in tone. We talked about Titanfall 2 does it so well. But when you think about, say, that of Cuphead, their tutorial, that is so far off what the actual worlds are like. I think it can also just be a bit like, oh, because the fact that, and I'm not using Cuphead to insult it, I'm just showing a different example, right? Cuphead is a beautiful game, some amazing looking worlds. But when you see the tutorial, which is just hand sketched boxes, and I get why they've done it, because artistically, it looks like a 2D animation. Well, actually, it is a 2D animation from what I remember from watching the, the making of. But when you show something like that, where, it, and again, I really don't mean this to come off as an insult. I'm just trying to explain it better, is when it looks like someone's just kind of put in a minimum. And maybe that's not what they wanted. Maybe that was not their intent. But you see that versus, say, Titanfall 2 or Last of Us 2 where this is a virtual reality mission, right? So even there, the worlds look similar to a point. It still has a cool art style in its own way. Last of Us is actually just taking place in a jungle gym. We were just in the world already, and we leave instantly out into the main world as soon as we've finished. I think that helps make the player still feel that they're in the main story. It keeps them in the world that they're, they're meant to be through. So yes, I think that can think about. So when you do have a tutorial, try and make it feel that it's actually part of this world, that it's not just a level. You know, VR missions, like I said, that you can do it well. Modern Warfare do it great with their course runs. But just think about how to keep it grounded, okay? Really do you think about the tone of your world, how it's there. Like I think if Cuphead had their very own little earlier world where maybe it's a bit more bright and colourful, maybe like Sweetland or something like that, I think that would have been a really more kind of engaging one. Again, that is not an insult to Cuphead or their their games. I am a fan of it. I did not complete it because I'm really bad at games. But, you know, I'm just talking about why that is not necessarily as memorable as others. Now, I've just looked at the time, so let's kind of rattle through. But yes, Last of Us, tone breaks down, well, actually has a set, a different tone showing you how the world has evolved with the environmental storytelling as well as the context. Low risk. If you get pelted with a snowball from a child, it's not going to be game over. It's not going to be like, oh, man, i got to restart. You also then have the building character relationship again with, why well, I'm, I'm going to say Dina. I don't think that's her name, but sorry if I've got that wrong. But you're building up that relationship again. And these sort of elements to it. So, yes.